I presented the results of the Keynote 598 study at, at World Lung in the last few days. Keynote 598 is a placebo-controlled, randomised, double-blind trial which compares the combination of pembrolizumab and ipilimumab to pembrolizumab plus placebo as first-line treatment for patients with non-small cell lung cancer and a tumour proportion score for pd one of 50% or more and also no activating mutations in EGFR or ALK. And so this is an important study to, to try and understand uh, for the first time in an appropriately powered way, the contribution that ipilimumab makes. The study accrued just under 570 patients, so 568 patients in total. They were evenly split between the two treatment arms, which were well balanced for the characteristics. This included both squamous and non-squamous cancers. About a quarter was squamous, three quarters non-squamous. The major finding in the study was that there was no difference in overall survival between the two study arms. The medians were almost identical, uh, 21.4 and 21.9 months. The hazard ratio uh, of 1.08 um, really indicates that there's no difference and there's a non-significant p-value. Similarly, for progression-free survival, there was no difference between the two arms. Progression, median progression-free survival was approximately eight months in each of the study arms. And again, the hazard ratio was 1.06, so indicating not any real difference between these two. Same sort of results for response rate and duration of response. So overall, in terms of the effectiveness of the treatment, there's really no difference between these two, two arms. By contrast, when you start looking at side effects and uh, start looking at some of the adverse events, there are differences. And it doesn't matter whether you look at treatment-related adverse events or immune-mediated adverse events, there are more adverse events with the pembrolizumab ipilimumab combination than with pembrolizumab alone. And that applies to all grade toxicities, to grade three to five toxicities, to the serious adverse events, to the ones that led to death and the ones that led to discontinuation of treatment. So, so when you take all this into account, um, there are more adverse events. It's important to point out, though, that, that those adverse events for the pembro ipi combination are very much in keeping with what's been seen when nivolumab is combined with ipilimumab, for example. And so really the study arms performed as we expected based on prior data. When you wrap this all up and you say, well, what does it mean? I think what it means is that there's no value for this patient population. So that's the tumor proportion score greater than 50% population. There's no value in the addition of ipilimumab to pembrolizumab. It just adds side effects without adding any effectiveness. And it means that pembrolizumab as monotherapy remains a standard of care for that patient group. So one of the interesting questions is why didn't um, the addition of another drug make a difference? And there are, there are a few possible explanations. Firstly, why, what, what is the, um, the finding not due to? We know it's not due to the fact that pembrolizumab did better than expected or pembrolizumab and ipilimumab did worse than expected. These drugs behave the way we would expect them to behave based on other studies. So, so it's not that, that something did um, extraordinarily well. I think one of the, the, the possibilities, and it was touched on in the discussion of, of the paper at the conference, is that when you take that tumor portion score greater than 50% population, you've got a, a population that already has an activated um, immune response. So there's already immune cells infiltrating in this kind of tumor. And it may be that, that even by adding a CTLA-4 inhibitor like ipilimumab, you can't make that any better. So it might be a population of patients where it really doesn't add to that. Another bit of evidence that, that supports that is if you go back to the Checkmate 227 study, although it wasn't really the primary endpoint, in fact, it was the group of patients with the very lowest 
TPSs, less than 1%, who actually had the highest or the most positive hazard ratios. So it may be that that's the group of patients where there's something to gain. But certainly, based on our results, there's no justification for adding ipilimumab to um, a PD-1 inhibitor, in particular pembrolizumab, for this group of patients.